Sometimes trading is not just about your profits. You also have to learn from your mistakes. Today, I made a big mistake, but hopefully you can learn from it. Hey, be sure to subscribe on my channel and click that little alert notification bell so you get alerted when I give you more of my wisdom. What's up, Tim Sykes Millionaire Mentor and Trader here uh, with kind of a tough lesson. Not very proud to talk about it. Um, but I got to, you know, I got to be fully transparent because I know most traders um, aren't. Um, I had one of my best executed trades in the morning. Not like the biggest dollar gain, but just very well executed. Uh, perfect entry, perfect exit. The stock played out exactly the way I thought and wanted. Made roughly two grand. Probably should have walked away. It was a midday trade, so uh, I don't usually trade midday, but. I was like, well, you know, this pattern was working midday. Let me try another midday. And this is why I have rules. Um, I should never have been trading midday in the first place. My first trade, while I did well, um, you know, I went against basically, you know, what I believe in, like trading near the market open, trading near the market close. And even though I was rewarded, even though I nailed it, it got me into kind of a dangerous mindset. And this is what I see happening with a lot of newbies. Actually, leave a comment below. Let me know if you've had a, kind of a frustrating loss or an annoying loss, um, and did you learn from it? Because no loss is the end of the world. I mean, unless you go all in or use leverage or trade Forex or binary or crypto, where usually a loss is the end of the world or close to it. But if you trade penny stocks and you cut losses, even with my loss, I still cut losses. Um, it's not the end of the world, but you have to learn from your mistakes. You have to learn what not to do. Um, so leave a comment. Let me know if this has ever happened to you. But there are good gains and bad gains. And newbies only think like, oh, let me just try to make as much money as I can. But if you make money in the wrong way, it leads to bad habits. Tim Grittani has talked about this um, in the past. I've talked about this. You know, if you just stay disciplined and look to make like $500 or $1,000 a day, that's a good thing. In fact, I'm gonna post a link just below this video um, how to make uh, $500 a day. I do this while I travel. Um, staying humble, it's not anything huge or grand, but you know, it keeps the real job away. And frankly, I think that's a good uh, thing where you know, you keep this small, you don't get you know, too big, too cocky. I do have traders, you know, and students who are making 50, 100, $200,000 in a day. I've personally made 50, 100, $200,000 in a day, but it doesn't happen most days. So if you just aim small, um, it really helps. So today, this morning, I made about two grand this morning. Very happy with my whole trade. Um, rarely do I ever sell at the top. And I just played it safe just because I was like around two grand. It was a speculative midday trade. And then I was just so happy with myself and I got away from what I know. Um, and again, the specific dollar amounts don't even matter whether you lose 200 or 2000 or 20,000, you know, uh, again, it's not the end of the world, um, for me. Um, and no loss should be the end of the world for you if you follow rule number one and cut losses quickly. But I partook in the second trade because I was cocky from the first trade. And because frankly, I was kind of breaking my rules with the first trade. So it's a very slippery slope. If you start breaking your rules in one trade, even if you win, it leads to you know, lower odds trades, more risks, and usually losses um, afterwards. Um, so I had a midday trade where, or it was like kind of a, a, a late morning trade. Um, right now, there's a virus going around the world. Um, all these little virus companies are popping up uh, 50, 100, 200%. This one company uh, makes uh, kind of like this, this uh, cleanser and it's uh, you know, deodorizing and um, you know, it, it's used when there's like viruses, right? Like, so it's, it, it popped on the last Ebola uh, virus outbreak. So it, it has a habit of spiking big. And it had already spiked a dollar a share from roughly 330 um, to 430 before I bought. I bought it on a dip at four, um, thinking that it could retest the highs at 430 and then break to 450. And that's exactly what happened. It was kind of coiling around four-ish. I gave it some time, broke out, I sold perfectly. Finished the day like in the threes. I didn't care, I was in and out for the midday spike. Um, this is why I, I don't really like, like chat rooms uh, where they just say, oh, high of the day breakout. Because yeah, this had a high of the day breakout. I think it was at 433, the ticker was OBCI. 
Um, it had a high of the day breakout at 433, and it went to like 460, but if you bought that high of the day breakout, you had a very small wiggle room for a profit. The key was buying on the 30 cent a share dip, which I did, and then selling into the breakout with all the idiots who just follow scanners. This is why you have an edge if you actually study this stuff. So that was a good trade. But then I got into PIXY, which, you know, again, midday, yes, it's an earnings winner, but that was from a few days ago. It really hasn't bounced nicely. I was also warning in chat that the overall market was tanking, be careful on all long. So my commentary was good, but because I was kind of going down this slippery slope of breaking my rules, I was like, yeah, let me try dip buying PIXY. It's near support. It was already down like 20% on the day. Um, and I thought, you know, maybe it could bounce. Um, and I actually had to come here to the studio to film too. And I was like, oh, let me get another quick trade and make another, you know, thousand or two. Um, so I took a small position, but I compounded that mistake because I accidentally doubled up on my position. Um, I clicked the, the thing twice and I didn't even realize it. So I'm like, ugh, it's not a very liquid stock. So I'm dip buying an illiquid stock midday in a crashing market. And I'm like, what am I doing? Um, and uh, you know, I realize this now, I didn't realize it at the time. I was like, yeah, let me just, I, I know you have the rules, but let me just try to make this trade. I think there's good risk reward. And it just kept going down. Um, and because it was illiquid, I, I couldn't even get out very quickly. I had to sell in little bits and, you know, wiped out all my morning gains. And again, it's not even just about the money. It's the fact that I broke my rules. Like I'm here, you know, teaching you, I'm, I'm talking about the rules all the time. And I, all it took was one little trade where I executed the entry and the exit in my plan to a T. And then I was like, oh, look at me, I know everything. And I threw out all the rules that I tried to teach you so quickly and I lost the gains um, and more. And it's like, I, it's so imperative that you stay disciplined. For me, I've been doing this 20 years, I've been teaching for 10 plus years. And in one instant like that, I just, you know, my brain just went plop. Um, and this is kind of like my confession. Like I got to get this out. This happens to everybody. I know every single great trader experienced losses. Um, and I just, I, I just, I, I can't believe I could be so uh, obtuse. Like I can't believe I, I could just be so undisciplined, but it happens. We're human. I did take the loss, which was, you know, one good thing. Um, and it kept going down even more. So it could have been a, a worse uh, loss. So even though I, I didn't cut losses as quickly as I could, I still kept it relatively uh, minimal um, versus I know some people where they're just hold and hope and they average down, average down. And then sometimes the stock does bounce a little and they get rewarded. And again, if you get rewarded partaking in bad habits, that's not a good thing because you might save some money or make some money in the short run, but in the long run, it kills you. Um, so you got to trust me with what I know to be good habits because I have been doing this for a while. I have created more millionaires um, in this niche than anybody else. So I, I think that I've earned that right to, to be listened to. You just got to really stay disciplined. Like any one trade can just set off the gambler inside of you like it did with me. And again, it's not a, the biggest dollar amount um, loss, but it's just frustrating because like I was so dead on. I was coming to the studio. I was all pumped. And now I'm just like, my ego is deflated, which is good. Um, and now this weekend, I'm gonna go back and study uh, some, some stuff. Um, I'm gonna post some more links below this video. I don't even know, just click all the videos because these rules are imperative. Uh, if you don't follow them, if you don't learn them, you're gonna lose and it's gonna hurt. Um, and I don't want you to hurt. I don't want you to lose. So click all the links below. I'm gonna include a whole bunch of useful, basic, uh, links just to keep you disciplined, to get you focused on the right patterns so that you can make $500 or $1,000 in a day. That does keep the real job away. Don't get cocky. Don't get undisciplined. Also, leave a comment below. Let me know if you've had any losses. I'd like to hear about it. Cheers.